all snug in my makeshift blind here. Uh, I'm out today hoping to photograph some river otters that have been coming through this area recently. And so I uh, came out here, found a natural little pocket in the vegetation and put together a natural blind. And uh, you know, these blinds can be one of the best ways to remain unseen when you observe or photograph wildlife. So yeah, I'm just, I'm out here today hoping to get these guys. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll cover some tips, some things to remember when using one of these blinds and uh, putting one together. Uh, but until then, let's uh, wait for some river otters. You know, wildlife at times can be very predictable, while at the same time, we can have no idea what they're gonna do. Uh, I set up this blind in an area that I had seen a lot of otter sign recently, so I was pretty sure that otters were gonna be passing through this little area. Uh, but just because I'm fairly certain that I'm gonna have otters doesn't mean that uh, they're gonna come sit here in front of the blind and pose all nice for me all day. <laughs> as awesome as that would be. Uh, over the last few days, I have spent over 21 hours in this blind, all for a handful of pretty quick glimpses of these otters. And let me tell you guys, it has been so much fun. Uh, these otters, like I had mentioned at the beginning of this video, these guys are pretty shy. So to be able to sit here and watch them, uh, you know, however briefly it was, but to be able to sit here and watch them behave completely naturally without any idea whatsoever that I was right here next to them has been 
so cool. I love being able to do that. And uh, let's, on that note, let's jump into a few things that you guys can do when setting up and using one of these blinds to uh, hopefully get you guys the experience or a photo that you're after or whatever it may be. So the first thing that I wanted to cover, and in my mind the most important thing to remember, uh, is when you come out to make one of these blinds, do it as respectfully as you possibly can. Uh, as you'll notice at the beginning of this video, when I set this blind up, uh, I found a natural little pocket in the vegetation. Now these are live plants that I'm sitting in, so I didn't break any, you know, have to do anything like that. What I did to make the hole a little bit bigger for me was I went out and found an already dead branch on the ground. It had a little uh, fork in it uh, with a smaller little branch coming off. And I used that fork to just very slightly push these living plants that I'm sitting in right now. So I pushed them ever so slightly apart a little bit more just to widen this gap that I'm sitting in to give myself, my tripod, and my camera room to work and maneuver in here. Uh, I then took a dead reed that I found, placed it over the top, threw my ghillie net over the hole, collected some dead grass, and uh, wove it through the net, put it in front of the uh, tripod legs, all that stuff. And uh, that's the blind, and it has worked great. Like I said, the otters have passed through multiple times, and they have no idea that I was here. And they were, you know, 15, 20 feet away at times. So when I'm done with this blind, after I've been here for a little bit each day, and I uh, take off for the day, I take it all apart. Uh, I'll take that branch that's kind of pushing the living branches, uh, just widening that gap ever so slightly. I'll take that branch out and, um, you know, help the other branches back to their original position. And uh, any grass that I've pushed down or anything, I'll kind of, you know, help stand back up, tease back up. And, uh, you know, just leave it exactly how I found it when I'm done, and it's it's just been fantastic here. Another thing that I highly recommend that you do before ever coming out and using one of these blinds is study your animal first. Uh, figure out what senses they tend to use more. This can tell you a number of things. If you've got an animal that relies heavily on its sense of hearing, you probably want to run video rather than take pictures unless you've got a completely silent shutter. Uh, that way you're doing something that makes no noise whatsoever. These otters, for example, uh, they are very in tune with any irregular noises that go on around them. So if I had been taking pictures with a loud shutter or something, as soon as they hear that, they would have been gone. Uh, but being able to run video or having a completely silent shutter, I'm able to capture uh, behavior as long as they're here and they'll never know that I was here because they won't hear anything. If you've got an animal that relies more on its sense of smell, then you probably want to limit the amount of time that you're here in this blind. If you're sitting here all day every day, your scent is going to linger here if you're here all day every day, and they're going to know that something has been using this area. So you probably want to limit your times in the blind to uh, the times that that animal is most active or something. Don't just sit here all day. Uh, if you've got an animal that relies more on your its sense of sight, then you want to do as well of a job as possible covering the entrance to your blind or covering the hole to your blind, camouflaging your blind. Uh, you want to make sure that you're, you get in the blind at a time when the animal is probably resting somewhere where it's not going to see you get into the blind. Things like that. Uh, so that's something that I highly recommend that you do. Next thing that I wanted to talk about real quickly is to make sure you're always, always putting the wildlife first. Uh, if you're going to set up your blind in an area that is going to alter that animal's behavior for whatever reason, please just don't do it. Uh, or if your presence there is going to disrupt that animal's natural behaviors, anything like that, please just find a different way to get your picture of that animal. Getting a picture at the expense of an animal is never worth it in my opinion. So please just be very careful when setting up these blinds. And again, uh, just respect the wildlife, respect the vegetation, uh, you know, your surroundings and everything. Put everything back how it was 
when you initially found the location that you're setting up your blind and you can just have a fantastic time out here with these animals going about unseen. Last thing that I wanted to talk about when using one of these blinds at the end of your time in here or throughout the day, whatever, check for ticks. Uh, I've already pulled <laughs> tick off me uh, from being out here the last few days. Y you always run the risk, you know, sitting surrounded by all these plants sitting in the grass and shrubs or whatever. You have a higher chance of getting ticks and bugs and stuff on you. So take the proper pre precautions to uh, protect yourself and, and check for ticks because they're just not fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's video. I've certainly had so much fun the last few days being out uh, waiting for these otters to show up. Some days they never did and uh, others, other days I just had those brief glimpses of them but still it has been so much fun with them and the other wildlife, the birds and whatnot in the area. It's just been so peaceful and just awesome out here. So uh, I'm gonna take this blind apart and uh, put everything back how it was and uh, hike on out. You know, it's just been great out here. I've had so much fun. If you guys liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out so much. Uh, also share it around. That really helps my channel out and I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much you guys for watching this week and we'll see you next time.